Yeah, I noticed this recently. I want to do a video about Mike Enoch because he's like the consummate Jew baiting shock jock white nationalist that I find to be pretty interesting and entertaining. He always follows the same pattern, which is pretty much in any situation, try to find the Jew angle. Um, try to connect how Jews are responsible for the phenomenon itself or its predecessor or something like this. And he was just so good at it, if not ridiculous. But come to find out, and this has been this way for a couple weeks, I never know if someone is like suspended or, you know, like what the difference is. What is this? Oh, I guess it's the guy who reported Mike Enoch. But, like, you, you kind of look at his Twitter and you wonder how he's even able to stay online. But obviously, like, he, he says a lot, but he there's certain lines he won't cross, like anything to do with violence, because then that would just make it too easy. But, yeah, he certainly was pretty, pretty intense. But he's gone. I want to say he had around, like, I thought it was like 15,000 followers, but probably on its way to like 20,000. So I look him up on Gab. Uh, he, he's got one tweet, or one Gab, whatever. Are you getting my Gabs? This is from like three years ago. He's got 4,000 followers. So that would be like, he's got a quarter of the followers now. So, like, the, the platforming definitely cuts into these guys' network. But he's got his own website and stuff, but... It's a shame, because I was going to go through his tweets and kind of analyze them, and now they're all gone. So, you know, like, you have to take advantage. Don't take even people like Mike Enoch for granted. You gotta... You gotta talk about them while they're available, until they're gone, you know what I mean? So... These are just all the tweets. Um, let me see, like, if I can see people tweeting at him. Because they were responding. These are people celebrate, But basically, like, what he was so good at is taking any situation and just any way tangentially connecting Jews to it and blaming them. One example that sticks out, there were many, but the JFK assassination, it was organized by some, like, Jewish Dallas businessman. So between that, you had Jack Ruby, who, he changed his name, but he was Jewish. He was the guy that assassinated Lee Harvey Oswald, like, as he was coming out of the police station or whatever. And then a couple other people. And he... You know, he puts, he strings together a couple names. And, oh, yeah, there was some Jewish guy that convinced him he didn't need a protective covering. So, you know, it was like a, a Jewish Mossad operation to assassinate him. Um, but then on the flip side, oh, yeah, that would have been, what was the reason for the assassination? To cover up Israel's nuclear program, I guess. I, I don't know. But then on another day, he would say, you know, JFK was fully controlled by Zog or was, um, yeah, I mean, he, he commissioned the report, uh, it, it was LBJ that got the Hard Seller Act through, but it, it was originally JFK's baby. So in that case, he was like, you know, part of the conspiracy, but then the conspiracy turned against him. I mean, but that's what he would do. And, you know, he has, like, his little army of fans that were all about it. Yes, Mike Enoch knows the true angle of what's going on. The true Jew angle of what's going on that everyone else is too afraid to talk about. Um, and he was, like, big into the Holocaust denial stuff. He, I, I talked to a guy who was going to debate him. But he's just such a good shock jock slash propagandist. 
Um, I think he was the best. I mean, Stryker is in a similar light. Obviously, the guy's not like a learned Holocaust expert or what you will, but you don't have to be to to be a denier. You just um, have to be ironic and put doubt in people's minds and be ironic with the memes and this and that. So, yeah, I'm disappointed. I should have done... Maybe his tweets are saved somewhere, but I, I, I should have done an episode. Um, I'm trying to look at tweets where, like, people are arguing his points. Oh, this is supposed to show that he's more alpha than... What's this guy's name? I think that's that's James Alsop or whatever. So, yeah, another book burning. We lost Mike Enoch and his antics. Um, I've baseball starting up today. I just found out that like Black Lives Matter is going to have a major presence. So, oh fuck! I guess I'm boycotting baseball too, or at least not going and spending money at their games. Parlor. I don't know if that's going to happen. Some people went there, but they started doubting it. I should go there just to see if if it if it's free speech. There's got, it's got to be pretty edgy. Yeah, here's here's Striker. So he's probably the most edgy guy left on the most edgy guy left on uh, Twitter. All right. So since I can't look at Enoch, let's look at Striker. Oh yeah, his I wouldn't trust a single fucking thing this guy says. But like. What these communities do, and it's not just white nationalists or neo-Nazis or whatever, you know, like uh, the blacktivists have their own media. Instead of finding um, sources that can support your point of view, you just create your own media, and that's what this national justice is. Like, uh, people retweet this like it's proof, you know, like, look, I found this article. And I'm like, yeah, it was written by fucking Stryker. I wouldn't trust a single fucking thing. If he said the sun was going to rise tomorrow between 5 a.m. and 11 a.m., I'd be like, well, I need verification on that because just because Stryker says it doesn't mean you can believe it. But he's a, he's another really good propagandist. His angle is different. He's more like about... Uh, what, he's more, like, socialist, or ho- however you want to say it. I don't know the right way to describe it, but... He connects... Uh, what's the word? Um, netball, right? He connects like national socialist-like policies with socialism, but um, it's the same antics, and... Okay, we're... Yeah, that's a funny picture. Racism has no place here. As their windows are cracked out. Uh, Yeah, so baseball is promoting Black Lives Matter banners and, like, patches, or I don't know exactly what they're going to do, but it's like, why not support the Negro Leagues? Be like, let's celebrate the history of the Negro Leagues that is the history of Major League Baseball. Like, why can't... I would support that. Or like even Juneteenth was was better than supporting Black Lives Matter, which is done things like this. And even if the people that did this weren't connected in any way to Black Lives Matter, they did it in Black Lives Matter's name. You know what I mean? Imagine another organization like the Tea Party. They would be fucking condemned or, you know, anything else. Yeah, and this is the angle they take, you know. Um, You're talking about the Uyghur genocide. What about making white people minorities in all these cities? I mean, the arguments they make are... They can be compelling, but obviously it's different. Um, Overall, people in the West support immigration. I mean, I don't know what percent it is, but 
It's a little bit different than uh, than what the Chinese are doing to the Uyghurs. But, you know, that's the meme, the white genocide, the white replacement, whatever it's called, the great replacement. What else we got going on here? Here we go. Conservatism is exactly what the Jews... Oh. I liked Mike Enoch more. It's too bad. Oh, I read this article. Adolf Hitler. But notice how, like, okay, here's an article about Adolf Hitler has a micro penis, slept with his niece, and liked to be kicked during sex. And he also had one ball, according to this article. So, like, here's an article they try to discredit. Now, if it was about Weinstein, if it was about, like, some Jewish guy, if it was about mm, Jews murdering babies and poisoning wells, they would have been like, yep, yep, where there's smoke, there's fire, yep. But, of course, it's against their beloved Hitler, so uh, they got to turn around and blame blame the Jews for being dishonest. France and Britain declaring war on Germany to save Poland was the Iraq WMD story of its time. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Same asshole turns around and claims, I'm historically illiterate. British knew, packed ahead of time, and didn't mind USSR invading Poland, too. Well, hey, man, they could only attack one enemy. I don't think the UK could... They had to take care of the Nazis, and then uh, the Soviets were next. But, um, I don't know. All this whining is interesting, and and they're so good at finding any opportunity and twisting it around and and pulling a victim card out of it. USA hates China today for the same reason Britain hated Germany in the 19th century. Um... Well, I mean, he's right in that they they look at Germany as a threat, and uh, we look at China as a threat. Doubtful, whatever. I don't know. Now he's arguing for central planning. Oh, he he says private banking is central planning, when by de- by definition it's not. Privatized central planners. I want to see where he does the the Jew angle, because Enoch would do that way more, and that's what I wanted to analyze. Oh yeah, I saw this fight. It's like this stacked white bitch, stacked both muscle wise and um, end in the rack. Take on like a couple of black chicks. Yeah, this is in Miami Beach. I could definitely see this happening. Definitely see that happening. Come on, where is he? This is like, okay. U.S. foreign policy and Antifa. I don't know. Not that exciting. Oh, this is um DeAndre Harris 
when they were fighting white nationalists. I mean, maybe maybe there's some truth to this. Yeah, they they went out with fucking bats, but the white nationalists had bats too. I mean, look, if there's Nazis and thugs beating the fuck out of each other, I mean, that's a win-win to me. Like Antifa versus Nazis beating beating the fuck out of each other and doxing each other. I'll, I'll sit on the sidelines and laugh and watch that all day. What is this about? Oh, the the Charlottesville narrative. Yeah, but like both sides lie, you know. Each side is like, oh, the other side was violent and we were totally innocent. And then everyone lies about the stupid James Fields accident. You know, like he's some kind of a fucking choir boy. That, um, there's the lie that there was a gun pointed at him when he was actually driving into the crowd. Like, people were beating on his car. It's easily disprovable if you watch the trial or read about the trial. But, again, the, you make your own truth. You have your own media. You have Stryker writes his own articles with his own, quote, sources. Like, he interviews some guy who's also, like, a fellow white nationalist. That's his source. Like, you don't need the truth. You just make up your own truth. James Field was an innocent choir boy, and he's a political prisoner. And that's that's your uh, that's your calling card. All right, Striker, you're fucking boring compared to Enoch. Oh, this fucking guy who I don't want to click on it because it's like a whole article, but that picture is hilarious. Here you go. I'm going by what's being reported in the Daily Mail. Goldberg. Jacob Wall has been taking money to troll and harass Jeffrey Epstein's victims to protect Israeli assets. It's like, you know, how does he come up with this shit? But like, it doesn't matter because his followers are like, yeah, yeah, that's the truth. The only person saying it isn't true is you, a random inbred Ashkenazi on Twitter. I actually gave this guy credit because I would argue with him and he didn't block me until I responded to one of his articles posting like something that totally basically destroyed the, the veracity of what he was saying. Instant fucking block. So that's what you get with these guys. But yeah, this is what you get, you know, an an amalgamation of people that have their own just alternate narrative they create out of thin air using whatever information they have available. So people would like, like Paul Talk would say, oh, you just, you debate them and you get to the truth that way. Uh, But it really wouldn't have any effect. Um. Now, when you when you kick Mike Enoch off of Twitter, <laughs> yeah, of course he's going to go to an alternate platform, but that does have an effect because his 16,000 followers or whatever um, can't see what he's saying, can't, rec- can't recruit, etc., etc. So... All right, I can't find anything good here, and I'm being boring, but it's unfortunate I couldn't do this about Enoch. I, sh- I should have uh, acted earlier. Anyway, whatever. Everyone have a good day.